want, I wanted to look at all of that. And then finally, for them to put any empty spaces that they had, to circle those empty spaces or to, do, uh, to designate the empty spaces. Um, so we got all of those back. And then CW and I sat down um, for many interesting hours um, coloring um, maps. <laughs> Because we found that it was easier to look at the map as a whole without reading every little thing if we saw what the map looked like. So, I want to show the little map. We have an example. Not that one. Not that one. We have an example. This is Spring Hill Elementary. What we did is we looked at, um, we had them, we colored yellow all of the regular classrooms. So you see all of those yellow things are regular classrooms, kindergarten, first, second, and third. Then we had, um, I guess that's a light green this time. All the light green things are um, special ed. And if you look, we've got 50%, um, well, it's not on this, but we had them color code whether they were used 50% of the time, full percent of the time. For um, enrichment, we had them put, you know, one day, two days, three days, because some usually schools have a full-time enrichment person there for five days a week, and then they may have another enrichment person that comes in two days or three days or one day. So we looked at special ed, and then blue, which is a real light blue, it's this color here, we indicated all of our specials. And what that included were your usual art, music, PE, but then the other things, the other special things that were out of the realm of special ed, like EIP, ELL, title programs, um, any of those sorts of things that we needed to use, enrichment programs. Then what's left, we color it, and it's a, um, a kind of brick color up here. CW says it's red. I say it's kind of brick colored. Um, of the rooms that were empty or have something that um, could be in a different space. For instance, at Spring Hill, there, there are quite a few vacant rooms, and he uses that building, which we want him to use. We want him to use the building. So here, there's a, uh, in this little room right here, there's an ASP person, a little half room. Well, if he ever needed that half room, the, the ASP person, the after school program person, would have to move out to something else. Um, he has a science lab. That's a wonderful thing to have. And he has it because he has the space now. But if he ever needed it to use for a classroom, the science lab would have to go. So we, we put in students. And then when there aren't students there, then our principals are wonderful about using the space we have to support the curriculum that they're um, teaching. So in essence, we looked at the whole classroom. We, we color-coded every, every classroom uh, instructional, well, every instructional unit and then we could look at the whole thing um, as we sat there, okay? The last thing, not the last thing, but the next thing we did was we visited each school. And CW is gonna take you on that little tour. We visited each school because we wanted to talk with the principals about how they're utilizing it, and we also wanted to walk the building just to see how they're utilizing it. Some of the classrooms, we didn't know if they were full or partial classrooms, that sort of stuff. So CW will now talk a little bit about our visits. Our talk and walk session was, was real informative for both Sondra and myself and our principals uh, because what we would do, we took the floor plan that she explained to you and then we would talk and discuss with them some changes that we felt like they could make. As she pointed out with all those errors going in different directions, that we could move classes, resource class to a half room instead of a full room and make some changes where we could free up some classroom space. And when we went in to talk to the principal, I mean, first I would sit down and ask him this question. How many students do you feel like you can adequately educate in this facility? And they really weren't expecting that question. And it took them a while, and they started thinking, and they would finally give us an answer. And I'd write that answer down. I would then share with them what the state says their facility, based on instructional units, should hold. Of course, it was quite different. We then discussed looking at the floor plan about any special programs each individual school had that really took away from an instructional unit. So we did that in the class in, in their office. And then 
Before we start walking, I'd ask him one other question. I said, you know, we're in the process of redrawing elementary lines. If you could, how would you adjust your boundary lines? Because the principal knows all the areas of their community, you know? Politics. But really, they know some things that are wrong or some things that maybe here's a neighborhood you think would be at the school and it doesn't for some reason. So they shared that information with us. And then we walked the facility. Had our floor plan out, and it was really interesting. First of all, facilities does a great job. The custodians had the schools looking wonderful. I'm sure you've been in them this week. They did a super job all summer getting the buildings just spotless and ready for our, our students three days ago, four days ago. But as we walked around, as Sandra pointed out, sometimes a room looks bigger on a floor plan than it actually does. So we had to determine, okay, is that a full classroom or is that a half classroom? What can we actually put in that classroom? And we'd make suggestions as we did here how we could free up space. And every instant, our principals knew that they had some space available. You know, sometimes they may have put down they had two empty classrooms, but as we were talking and walking, we may find four or five classrooms, or a couple little other half rooms that we could use for, for resources. So then we'd come back together and we'd sit down and discuss again their floor plan. And then we'd recalculate and say, so, well, you know, you had 43 instructional units. We found that your particular school had four special programs or 11 special programs, whatever the case may be. And then we'd subtract that from instructional units and then look again using the formula that the state gives us and you know what? We were within five to ten students of exactly what the teacher said they could handle. It wasn't necessarily the, the state capacity, but what they really felt like they could adequately educate in that building. So we felt like it was a great process where we got to sit down, discuss the floor plan and their facility with us in the central office, either school operations or curriculum. And they all thanked us. So they're all working and so very supportive of the process that we're going through. And they're really looking for your leadership, particularly back at your school level, to make sure you're reporting back to your friends and neighbors about really what is happening with our elementary boundary process. So we're in the very early stages of gathering data. And as uh, you'll find out tonight, we have a long way to go. Yes, Are we going to find out what the principal's opinions were about where the boundaries should be? Or is that secret? There's nothing secret. I'll be I mean, more than happy I mean, to just share as part of get, our... When we get to that point, okay. I'll be glad to share that with you. Okay. Absolutely. So, thank you. I think I have some show and tell buried behind you or something. What? Do I have some show and tell? You do. I'm going to get you ready for show and tell. <laughs> I'm going to get uh, there are a couple of important things that are covered here. One of them is inclusion of the site administrators in, in the inventory. The other thing is, please, that one school is mentioned, but it's not picked out as an example to beat up. <laughs> it's just a particular example. Uh, and, and in fact, across the board, uh, the, the team was able to free up classrooms because they have a district-wide view of what the building should be. Um, I was uh, very pleasantly surprised to see that uh, uh, the programmatic uh, part of their review was very consistent. I've had districts where each site-based administration had their own ideas of programs. Uh, and uh, the consistency and ability to compare progress was difficult. So that was good. Uh, and, and the inclusion is starting here with the staff and then extending on to you folks with the, with the data. Uh, that's one thing. And this process is going to take us next on to interpreting data. We'll be kicking that off at the next meeting. Go ahead. Uh, you see how we were dividing the district up into the neighborhood planning units underneath these school zones. And uh, that's how complex it gets with that.